my name is Bonnie Welch and I'm head of projects at the Sustainable Food Trust. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk to you as part of the People's Food Summit and I'm really pleased to be able to share a recent piece of work of ours which looks at the future of sustainable farming uh, in the UK. So the Sustainable Food Trust is a UK-based organisation and our mission is to accelerate the transition to more sustainable food systems. Um, they're systems that work in harmony with nature, that combat climate change and that promote public health. We do that by carrying out research, uh, by delivering projects and campaigns and through our high level uh, advocacy and policy work. And as head of projects, I actually oversee quite a bit of that work, uh, particularly our work on food and farming education, on beacon farms um, and also on our Feeding Britain uh, research. And that's what I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you a little bit more about today. So the Sustainable Food Trust work is informed by an understanding of truly sustainable farming systems that work in harmony with nature. And they're systems which are based on a biological approach to farming without the use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. They integrate crop production with livestock production wherever possible, particularly here in the UK. They reduce and recycle waste both before and after the farm gate. They promote a diversity of crops, of genetics, of farm enterprises, and importantly, biodiversity. And they are uh, systems which deliver social and cultural benefits, um, including higher levels of, of employment and also job satisfaction. And as you can see here, a transition to truly sustainable farming in the UK would involve moving away from the extractive farming systems that rely on high levels of inputs and have uh, will generally cause quite considerable damage to the environment to systems which are healthier, that regenerate the soil, that improve biodiversity and produce high quality nutrient dense foods. However, as many of you will know, there are some significant barriers to change, including a lack of enabling government policy, little economic incentive here in the UK to farm sustainably, sustainably and also public confusion about what to eat to be healthy and sustainable. And to address some of those challenges and in answer to that final point and the question on many people's minds about what should I eat to be healthy and sustainable, we carried out research um, looking at the impacts on land use, on food production and on diets of a nationwide transition to sustainable and regenerative farming in the UK. And our research was based on this premise that we should all align our diets to the outputs of sustainable farming systems in the countries or regions in which we live. So feeding Britain from the ground up is our piece of research which came from that very premise. And the good news, and we'll, we'll go into this in a bit more detail in just a second, is that broadly speaking, a transition to more sustainable systems could produce enough food to maintain and potentially even improve on current levels of self-sufficiency, provided, and this is important, uh, that we ate differently, that we ate less, and that's in line with European health recommendations, and that we reduce food waste. And the following short sequence of films that you're about to see um, explores our modelling in more detail and reveals the specific impacts on land use and uh, food production and individual diets. Thank you. The food that we choose to eat and the farming systems that produce it are of crucial importance in relation to climate change, biodiversity and public health. That's because more than half of the habitable area of our planet is farmed. And because our current farming systems are intensive, they have been one of the major causes of greenhouse gas emissions, biodiversity loss and damage to public health. But we mustn't blame the farmers. They've simply been responding to agricultural policies which have encouraged the globalization of food supply systems and have forced farmers to intensify their methods of production. This has led to farming practices which have degraded soils, reduced biodiversity, polluted our landscapes, negatively impacted on animal welfare and of course produced huge amounts of waste. 
So, the current intensive farming system isn't working for farmers, for the environment, or for us. But it doesn't have to be like that. Across the world, more and more farmers would like to transition to farming systems that work in harmony with nature. Producing healthy food in ways that also encourage high levels of farmland biodiversity, help tackle climate change and make more efficient use of limited resources. We know farming in this way is possible, but questions are often raised about whether such systems could provide us with enough food and whether our diets would have to change if we adopted them. To address these questions, we carried out research into the implications on the farmed landscape of a national transition to sustainable food production. We calculated how much food and of which kinds the UK would produce if all our farms were managed in ways which worked in harmony with nature. So our first task was to establish the key elements and principles of the farming systems which would replace those we have at the moment. Systems which produce sufficient quantities of high quality, nutrient dense food, avoiding the use of non-renewable inputs, address climate change, restore soil fertility and biodiversity, and promote the health and well-being of the system as a whole, including the plants, animals, and people. Common to all sustainable farming systems would be the use of crop rotations, the practice of growing different crops year on year, which allow farmers to naturally build fertility and tackle pests and weeds without the use of large quantities of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Key to this is a rotation with a restorative phase where the land is planted with grass and clover and often grazed by livestock, which, as well as helping to build fertility, tackle weeds and boost biodiversity, also providing a key source of food and income. We then set out to identify the most appropriate farming systems for each of the wide variation of different climate zones, soils and landscapes of the UK, ranging on the one hand from extensive grassland systems for the high rainfall hills and mountains of northwestern Britain to the more productive systems in the fertile lowlands. The food productivity from these different farming systems would of course vary considerably, ranging from mainly grazing livestock in the uplands to system producing cereals and pulses, vegetables and fruit in the more fertile areas. So if we applied this approach nationally, what would be the key changes resulting from the introduction of these sustainable food production systems? A key feature would be a nationwide return to so-called mixed farming, with most farms moving away from monocultures where one type of food production is grown year on year to a system producing a much wider range of enterprises and of course foods. As a result of these changes, total grain production of crops such as wheat, barley and oats would fall dramatically, perhaps to less than half of present levels. As a result, we wouldn't have enough grains to feed intensively managed chickens, pigs and dairy cows, which currently eat half of all the cereals we grow. Feeding such huge quantities of grain and soya to livestock is an immensely wasteful and damaging practice, so these systems would be phased out. This would mean a more limited role for pigs and poultry compared with the present, with a return to their traditional role as recyclers of food and crop wastes. Food distribution systems would also need to change, with more crops being grown for local consumption, including more grains and vegetables, and fruit in the west of Britain. And of course, 
local systems for slaughtering and processing livestock would also be needed. As a result, we would see an increase in number of grazing animals in the east of the UK to enable farmers to turn the fertility building pastures of their crop rotations into food that they can sell and we can eat. Dairy herds fed on grass and byproducts from crop production would also become a more common livestock enterprise in the east, but grass-fed beef and sheep production, as well as pastured poultry and outdoor pigs would also be introduced. Crop production would of course still be an important enterprise on many of the more favoured farms. With a variety of crops, including fruit and vegetables grown as part of crop rotations. Specialist horticulture would also find a key place, with regional and local biologically intensive systems based on compost producing much larger percentage of the seasonal vegetables and fruit that comprise the sustainable diets of the future. The same would apply to towns and cities, with peri-urban farms playing an important role in providing nutritious, healthy, affordable and local food for urban citizens. For those beautiful yet challenging conditions on the uplands of Britain, grazing by hardy breeds of cattle and sheep kept at low densities using grazing systems appropriate for the habitats would provide major benefits to a huge number of species. So too with the integration of trees and livestock, a practice known as agroforestry, as well as providing habitats for woodland species, growing trees alongside food crops would provide another source of income for farmers and critically help draw down very significant amounts of carbon from the atmosphere. We believe that by transitioning to farming systems that work in harmony with nature, farmers can find a right balance between food production, the restoration of nature, and the delivery of a nutritious and healthy diet for our nation, the shape of which is the subject of our next film. In our first film, we looked at the way in which farming in the UK could be adapted to address the serious threats of climate change, biodiversity loss and declining public health, highlighting the need to restore the balance between food production, wildlife and the environment. In this second film, we'll explore the implications for our diets because the only way that sustainable farming systems can thrive is if we eat the foods that they produce. The first question that we need to explore is, if sustainable and regenerative farming practices were applied right across the UK, how much food would be produced overall? And secondly, how much of each food type could we produce, including grains, vegetables and livestock products such as meat and dairy? So let's examine the key findings. If sustainable farming systems were adopted nationwide, there would be major changes in productivity. On the one hand, we would be able to produce more fruits and vegetables and pulses such as peas and beans, and about the same amount of lamb and beef with less dairy production. On the other hand, we would produce far less grain, perhaps 50% of current levels, and much less chicken and pork. Prices would also need to change to reflect these changes in output, and we would need to adjust our diets accordingly. Why is this? The key change in food output relates to the avoidance of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. 
This is because the only way that farmers can avoid using chemicals is by introducing crop rotations which include fertility building pastures and often grazed by livestock, then followed by a succession of crops including vegetables, grains and pulses. Under a sustainably farmed Britain, our fruits and vegetables would be grown in a very different way. Instead of the majority being grown intensively in the east of the UK, a far greater percentage will be produced on mixed farms throughout the country, resulting in better tasting, more nutrient-dense produce. The production of cereal crops, like wheat, would fall by around 50%, but we'd still have enough grain to eat, although there wouldn't be enough surplus to feed intensive livestock. So we'd have to stop eating cheap chicken, pork, and dairy products from intensive herds altogether. Instead, we'd have livestock systems, free range, welfare friendly, and working with the grain of nature from smaller herds where the animals would get out to grass twice a day during the grazing season in the case of dairy cows. We wouldn't produce quite as many eggs as we are used to, but they'd be of much better quality from pasture-grazed, free-range hens. Another key finding of our report is that we'd still have plenty of mainly grass-fed beef and lamb to eat, as these animals will play a crucial role in helping to build soil fertility during the rotations by eating grass and providing manure on mixed farming systems, transforming grassland into food that we can eat. In this way, mixed farming systems can combine vegetable, cereal and livestock production, thus helping to restore the landscapes with livestock products being very much part of a sustainable diet. To help farming change for the better, we will need to eat differently. An individual diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables grown sustainably in the UK, combined with high quality grass-fed animal products consumed in moderation should be the future of sustainable diets in the UK. So a key question we need to ask is not should I eat meat and dairy to be sustainable, but rather which meat and dairy is the most sustainable and then how much of it can I eat? and we should be asking those same questions about our fruits, vegetables and grains too. Not all diets will be the same, of course, and there will be variations depending on dietary preferences as well as religious and ethical considerations, all of which can find a place in our future food and farming systems. The most important thing to consider is where and how our foods are produced as these factors have a huge bearing on the environmental, economic and social impact of our food choices. Our Sustainable Food Trust report on future diets indicates that if we want to eat sustainably, we should switch to eating the foods which come from the sustainable farming systems of the future. To explore what that would mean in the UK, we researched the impact of a countrywide adoption of sustainable food production to our future diets. How much food and of what kinds could the UK produce if every farm in the country were managed in ways that work in harmony with nature? And what would that look like in terms of individual diets? The report challenges several of the orthodoxies which currently prevail on food waste, on affordability, and on the role of livestock in sustainable food systems. In this short film, 
we will respond to the key concerns in relation to the farming system and diets that we are advocating. On food waste, reducing and ideally eliminating food waste is an absolute priority. This could be achieved partly through advances in technology and the application of the polluter pays principle and through farming systems reform to align our future food production to the principles of the circular economy. On equitable distribution, it should be a fundamental human right for every citizen to have access to high quality, nutrient dense food. But to achieve this, both during and after the transformation towards sustainable farming, governments will need to step in. Subsidising and underpinning the pricing system for lower income groups, providing, for instance, free school meals and other forms of support, such as public procurement, food on the public plate. On affordability, many people are understandably worried that the introduction of a truly sustainable and regenerative farming system could make food unaffordable for a substantial percentage of the world's population. Whilst it must be an absolute priority to ensure that good food is affordable to lower income groups, in truth, the apparently cheap prices that we have become so used to are dishonest because they don't reflect the damage caused to the environment, to the climate, or to human health. We are advocating a change in policy where a combination of the polluter pays principle is applied and subsidies are redirected to encourage a shift to more truly sustainable forms of food production. A further area of concern comes from the farming community who are understandably worried that if our producers adopted regenerative and sustainable farming systems in the UK, they would be undercut by imports of food produced to lower standards. To address this legitimate concern, we believe future international trading agreements based on farm sustainability assessments could offer a solution. The Sustainable Food Trust is developing a global farm metric which if it were adopted by the international governmental community, could ensure that in future only sustainably produced foods will be traded tariff-free on the global market. Linked to this point is the structural reality that continuing food imports will be inevitable in many countries, including the United Kingdom, since our population exceeds the structural capacity of our land to feed it. Few of us would want to be deprived of access to a range of foods which cannot be produced in our climate zone. On this point, it is important to note that our report recommendations are solely related to the staple foods that could be produced by our UK farming community. In order to realise our vision of a sustainable food future, we need to adapt our tastes and our diets to support the food products from the farming systems which will best suit our climate and our landscape. And in relation to imports, we should restrict all our purchased foods from overseas to farming systems which meet those same criteria. If we can do that, whilst at the same time addressing the stark inequality which prevents people in lower income groups from having access to high quality nutritious food, then we can truly co-create the food and farming systems which we need for the future. My name is Toby Anstruther, I farm at Balkaski and we farm about 3,000 acres of mixed farm. We've just taken off the last harvest from the last of the conventional fields and started transition to take the whole lot into organic. 
when I started farming here at Balkaski, it was a conventional farm. It did have livestock, but we really kept the grain and the livestock quite separate. And like so many farmers, we were fighting against the sort of crush of costs and prices at the other end, and really just being a commodity farmer, driving costs out of the system all the time. And what really resonated with me, what struck me was that if we headed on down this route, we were going to end up with a farm I didn't really want to live on that we would end up basically with one or two huge fields and no veggies, no livestock, no wildlife, and with really awful soil having drawn everything down off it. And we were gonna be competing with what's grown in a lab or what's grown on the huge, huge fields in other parts of the world. So for me, it was completely unsustainable to carry on like that, and I knew that I had to make a change. The simplest change for me, in a way, was to decide to get off the drug of the chemical farming. But really that was just the beginning, and what I found is that as we moved organic, a whole lot of other things had to change. We had to change the scale of what we were doing, we had to change the nature of our crops. So we've moved to heritage varieties, not so much for fashion or their interest in the market but particularly because they're deep-rooted, they're longer strawed, so the light doesn't get to the bottom, you don't get so many weeds coming up. It's been really, really interesting, the change over to organic, because it suddenly put us back in touch with what the essence of farming is, that we're capturing sunlight uh, and we're making the most of the soil. And if we look after those two things, then I think we can produce really fantastic food at reasonable cost so that it's available to anyone that needs it.